Is artificial intelligence the golden goose of our generation, or is this the next tech bubble about to pop? Felix here, and I'm going to guide you through a labyrinth of financial and technological information here today. As a former banker with years of experience in this, I've witnessed my fair share of boom and bust cycles, including the dot-com boom and bust. But nothing quite compares to the AI frenzy we're experiencing right now. In 2024, we're seeing a seismic shift in the investment landscape here. And we're going to focus a little bit here on earlier stage investments because that's actually what leads the market down the road. So if you want to be the best informed investor out there, stick around, pay attention. Now, nearly half of all venture capital funding is pouring into AI startups this year. It's a gold rush that's leaving everybody kind of breathless. And the question is, is this surge in AI investment the beginning of groundbreaking innovation or is it about to pop like the dot-com bubble? So let's ask Winston, my loyal financial advisor here, what he thinks of this. All right, jokes aside. In the next few minutes, we're going to dissect the numbers, analyze the trends, and evaluate generative AI's future from a slightly different perspective. We explore why VCs are betting big on AI, examine the potential pitfalls, and consider what this means for the global economy and for you and me in our investing strategies. And for those of you looking to elevate your investment game, well, we're up 93% so far this year on our teaching portfolio. And if you fancy learning our methods, I'm hosting a beginner boot camp next Tuesday. I'll teach you how to set up trades, automate profit-taking, and manage risk all in about an hour and a half. So sign up at felixfriends.org slash bootcamp to secure your free spot and become part of the million people that we aim to make financially free here. So let's unravel this AI enigma and determine whether we're witnessing a bubble or a breakthrough. First, we need a little bit of context. Cast your mind back to 2021. It was a year of unprecedented exuberance in the venture capital world. According to a recent Morgan Stanley report, venture funding reached a staggering $1.2 trillion with a T, more than the entire previous decade of funding combined. It was the epitome of what we call in the industry easy money. But as the saying goes, what goes up must come down and came and come down it did. By 2023, we saw a sharp 60% decline in venture capital investments as interest rates climbed beyond 5%. It's a sobering reminder of the cyclical nature of the economy. But the story doesn't end here. According to data from Crunchbase, we're seeing signs of a recovery in 2024. In Q2 of this year, global funding reached 79 billion, a five-quarter high. And this uptick was largely driven by mega rounds of $100 million and above, demonstrating renewed confidence in growth-oriented late-stage companies. Now, you might be thinking, why the heck do I care what venture capitalists do? Well, the stock market moves very, very much in line with what the venture capitalists do. Plus, the IPOs of the future come out of the venture capital space. So if you understand this, you'll be able to not just know more about what's happening right now in the market, but you will also understand what you might want to invest in in a year or two or three. The Crunchbase report reveals that funding to the AI sector doubled to a staggering $24 billion in Q2 alone. It's the highest amount we've seen in the past 18 months. We're talking about billion-dollar fundings for companies like XAI, CoreWeave, Wave, ScaleAI, Xyra, Therapeutics, and so on. To put that into perspective, AI startups are now receiving nearly half of all funding this year. It's a concentration of capital that's unprecedented. And what's particularly striking is the divergence between AI and other once hot sectors. Take blockchain, for instance. Just three years ago, blockchain startups could depend on a near one-to-one -one correlation with funding with crypto prices. Now, despite crypto prices being only about 10% below the 2021 highs, funding for blockchain startups has dropped 75%. No one cares anymore. So let's dive deeper into the reasons behind this AI frenzy and examine the potential rewards for you and me, but also the risks. So is AI a bubble? Well, I've seen my fair share of bubbles. The dot-com boom of the late 90s, the housing bubble of 2008, and more recently, the crypto frenzy. And, and each time we heard the same refrain, this time it's different. But is it really? Let's examine the facts. 
On one side, we have the staggering amounts of capital pouring into AI. Companies with little to no revenue are raising hundreds of millions, sometimes billions, based on the promise of future AI breakthroughs. And that disconnect between current revenue and market valuation does remind me of the dot-com era. Back then, companies are valued on eyeballs and potential rather than actual profits. I was working for a dot-com company in 1999, and we had a goal, which was cash burn rate. Seriously, the venture capitalists would give us more money if we spent more money. That was our target. And we're seeing a little bit of a similar pattern here with AI companies valued on the potential algorithm and data sets rather than what they're actually doing in terms of commerce. But there is a crucial difference. And like many dot-com companies, today's AI firms are often built on solid tech. They're not just ideas, they're functional products with real capabilities. The counter-argument to the bubble theory lies in the transformative potential of AI. We're seeing real-world applications that are revolutionizing industries. From healthcare diagnostics to financial modeling, AI isn't just hype. It's actually delivering tangible results. And moreover, the adoption rate of AI is unprecedented. According to McKinsey, back in 2023, 55% of companies are already using AI in at least one function. And this rapid adoption suggests that AI is not just a speculative play, but a fundamental shift in how businesses operate. But here is where it gets tricky. The concern isn't necessarily about the technology itself, but about the sustainability of the current frenzy. Are we funding too many companies chasing the same opportunities? Are we overestimating the short-term potential while underestimating the long-term potential? The crux of the matter lies in the gap between AI-generated revenue and capital spend. Many AI companies are burning through cash at an alarming rate, bet betting on future breakthroughs to justify their valuations. And this high-risk, high-reward strategy is reminiscent of past bubbles. Now, there's, of course, one company that's very happy about all this spending, and that is NVIDIA. You seem to power pretty much every startup out there. But unlike previous bubbles, AI has the potential to create entirely new markets and revenue streams that maybe we can't yet foresee. The question is not if AI will be transformative, but whether the current valuations accurately reflect the potential. So in my humble opinion, we're not in a classic bubble, but rather in a period of exuberance that carries both insane opportunity and also significant risk. The key for investors will be to differentiate between the companies with sustainable AI advantages and those riding the hype train. So as we move forward through this, it's crucial to maintain a balanced perspective. AI's potential is undeniable, but so are the challenges it faces. In the next section, we're going to explore why VCs are so bullish on AI despite all of these risks and concerns. First and foremost, VCs are in the business of identifying and backing transformative technologies. And AI has the potential to be one of the most transformative technologies we've seen in decades, maybe centuries. According to recent projections, the AI market is expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of over 30% in the coming years. And VCs are essentially placing their bets on what they believe will be the next major tech revolution. Three key reasons why these professional investors are particularly excited about AI. One, product market fit. Unlike many hype technologies of the past, AI is demonstrating strong product market fit across a wide range of industries, from healthcare to finance, manufacturing to entertainment. AI isn't just a solution looking for a problem, it's solving real, tangible issues. For instance, in healthcare, AI is revolutionizing diagnostics, drug discovery. In finance, it's transforming risk assessment and fraud detection. And this widespread application is music to an investor's ear. And number two, we have the rapid user adoption. We're seeing both consumers and companies embrace AI technologies at an unprecedented rate. ChatGPT, whether you like it or not, reached 1 million users in five days and then 100 million users in just two months. That's a feat that took Facebook four and a half years to achieve. So this rapid adoption reduces one of the biggest risks in tech investment, the risk that a great technology might fail to find its audience. Well, the audience is there and they want more. Thirdly, investors are excited about the potential for AI companies to build strong competitive moats through network effects and data accumulation. 
as AI systems learn from more and more data, they improve, attracting more users, which in turn generates more data. And this virtuous cycle can lead to a winner-takes-most market, which are highly attractive to VCs. That's the argument that I'm making for, for Tesla, for example, or Palantir. And let's talk about where these investors are focusing their investments, because it's going to give us an insight into what we might want to be investing in. Based on my analysis and conversations with people in the industry, there are three areas that stand out. One, foundational model builders. So these investors are betting on big companies developing large language models and other foundational AI technologies. These are the picks and shovels of the AI gold rush. Think OpenAI's LLMs or, or Claude and Thropic, you know, all that stuff. Two, vertical AI applications. There is a significant interest in AI applications tailored to specific industries, particularly in healthcare, finance, and enterprise software, because those guys tend to pay the most. And then number three, we have AI infrastructure companies developing the hardware and the software infrastructure to support AI operations. From my perspective, the investment enthusiasm for AI is actually justified, but it needs to be tempered with rigorous due diligence and a clear-eyed assessment of each company's potential. The winners in this space will likely be those who can not only develop cutting-edge AI, but also successfully commercialize and build sustainable business models. So when you're looking at companies to invest in, large or small, don't just look for the ones with the word AI in it. That's usually a bit of a red flag. Uh, that's just a cheap way to get attention. Look at what their actual customers are doing with it. What are the customers saying? Are they happy? Are they excited? Are they exuberant? And do they actually have some revenue? Because if you have no revenue, for most of us, it is just far, far, far too risky to, to get into it. 90% of the AI companies will go out of business. Like 90% of the EE companies will go out of business. Like 90% of the original car companies at the beginning of last century went out of business. And 90% of dot-com companies went out of business. This time will be no different. So you have to pick the winners and therefore you have to be a little bit careful with your selection. But let's take another step up and examine what's on the horizon for AI. First, let's talk about the tech breakthroughs that we're actually anticipating. One of the most exciting areas is in semiconductor and data center efficiency. We're on the cusp of a new generation of AI-specific chips that could dramatically increase processing power and reduce energy consumptions. And companies like NVIDIA and AMD and several startups are racing to develop those next AI chips. What about the emerging AI applications that are going to reshape industries? In healthcare, we're likely to see AI make significant strides in drug discovery, personalized medicine, and early disease detection. It's essentially a data business. So imagine AI systems that can predict health issues before they manifest, potentially saving millions of lives and billions or trillions in healthcare costs. Education. Personalized learning powered by AI could revolutionize education, adapting to each student's unique learning style and pace. And then we have autonomous systems, possibly the most exciting, at least visually. Beyond self-driving cars, we're looking at AI-powered drones, robots, autonomous ships that could transform logistics and transportation and massively reduce the cost of supply chains improve the safety of our roads and streets and everything else. I'm confident that we're going to see real robocops on the street making our world hopefully a lot safer if done right. But perhaps the most intriguing aspect of AI's future is the potential for killer apps. Applications that could drive mass adoption and create entire new markets. One area to watch is the intersection of AI and augmented reality. Imagine AI assistants that can provide real-time information and guidance as you navigate through the world, blending the digital and physical realm seamlessly. Another potential game changer are AI-driven creativity tools. We're already seeing AI assistant writing and image creation, but the next frontier could be AI co-pilots for music composition, film editing, or even scientific discovery. Other issues, yes, there's AI bias. We're seeing that in some of the nonsense that puts put out by Google and so on. Data privacy, um, unemployment, right? If everything is self-driving, if everything is self-delivering, if the factories are just staffed with robots, what are we all going to do? <laughs> well, the question, of course, isn't really what we're going to do, but how are we going to live? How are we going to get paid? And that's something, obviously, that we need to... Uh, 
figure out. Um, certainly the people who are asset rich will not really worry about it, which is why I recommend that you get to be asset rich because then you can actually decide what you want to do every day of your life, robots or not. Uh, but it is a massive, massive disruptor. I remember when I was a child and the mines closed in the early 90s and there were you know, suddenly hundreds of thousands of people unemployed and there wasn't really a job for them to have. This is going to be that, but on a much bigger scale. It's like the industrial revolution again. So if you are in a job that is repetitive, I beg you to find another income stream that you have control over where you can't get fired. And don't have to do what I do. I do. I trade. I also have a bunch of other businesses. But you got to do that now because when everybody else realizes what's going to happen, it'll be very, very hard because everyone else is going to be looking for the same thing. So if you wish to learn how we do what we do and trade in a couple of hours a week, I never promise you returns, but I show you what I do. I show you my trades. I show you our strategy. Then come and learn our simple three-step system for free next week at felixfriends.org slash bootcamp. It'll be live. It'll be fun. And I thank you for tuning in. I thank you for watching. If you found this little uh, deep dive useful, share it with a friend. And... I hope to see you on the next one. What if I told you that one of America's most iconic companies could be teetering on the edge of financial ruin?